Hey everybody, hope you're all doing good today. Just out here, Lake Louisville, it's the, uh, uh, really, it's the third day of practice, but really my second full day of practice because those issues I had earlier. Finally did get my electronics fixed. Um, got a hold of a hummingbird, got everything lined out. So I'm, uh, I'm up and running as far as being able to tell how deep it is and everything. But hey, just want to take a few quick minutes here, a little break in the day. Uh, talk about something pertinent to Louisville and a lot of lakes across the country that you fish, popular lakes, and that is uh, not necessarily how to, how to uh, handle fishing pressure because that's a topic that is just rehashed over and over again. Everybody knows that you got to do something different. I mean that's that's just that's just a given. But more what I want to talk about today is how to identify those areas that are getting the pressure and stay away from those type of areas because there are certain areas of the lake that simply attract more attention than others the way they're laid out and if you look at a lake map um, and put yourself in a lawn tramp area there are certain tracks that people make as far as running up a lake or down the lake or into creek arms or out of creek arms that simply pull more attention to them um, and it's easy to see this because that's where you're going to see most of the boats. For example, down here at Lake Louisville, the, the area that I lawn stand, there's, there's one creek arm close to the ramp. And it is just pulling in so many boats. It's just like there's a boat on every point. There's a boat in the back of every cove. There's a boat on every boat dock in there. And I fished in there this morning for like 10 minutes and left. I said, there is no way that you're going to come in here and finish high in this tournament. It's just, I mean, yeah, somebody may go in there and, you know, got some little deal going on and they, they may scrape out a check, but as much people are, that is in and out of this particular Creek, um, I just fished it for 10 minutes and left. And that's one of the things that you sort of have to do is you have to pay attention to the areas in the lake that are attracting more attention. And, stay out of those areas unless you have something that is completely off the wall or something if you've got some offshore deal or if you've got something that is just uh, really really special the odds of you doing well in that particular area are going to be minimal and when you're on a lake like Lake Louisville or Gunnersville or just Grand Lake in Oklahoma or, or any of these lakes that just get pounded by fishing pressure you have to be able to identify these areas that are simply overlooked. And when I'm talking about overlooked, I'm talking about um, it's not necessarily their secret areas because there are no secret areas anymore. There's there's not a single stone unturned on any lake in this country that you think is secret. It just doesn't exist. Specifically, what I'm talking about is the areas that that simply they don't look quite as good visually. And when you're running down a lake and you don't see the visual cover on a particular lake, um, that's a good indication that pulls me into that area because I wanna go into those areas that don't look that great. And I wanna identify maybe the little bitty small sweet spots within that area that the fish can be holding at. And this is particularly true if, it, if the area is fairly large where it can like, where the, the entire area doesn't look that great, but I, I'll go in there and I'll maybe I'll identify, you know, certain little key elements in that thing that there's a few fish on. And if the area's big enough, that can keep me busy for the whole tournament. So um, that's one of the things I've been looking here, you know, for at Lake Louisville. And a lot of it is just feel because um, once you spend a lot of time on the water and a lot of years in the water you can roll into an area and you can just sort of feel the potential that it has you may not catch them somebody else may catch them but you you, you gain this ability to feel you know for an area that maybe it's got a chance to just get a check in maybe it's got a chance of potential to win the tournament or high finish and you can read that water now that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have a high finish because a lot of times you can be in the best water on the lake but if you're not if your timing's off or your rotation's off or your approach is off you're still not going to catch them but um, once you once you are able to identify the areas of the lake that have the bigger fish in them and have the groups and concentrations of fish that's when you can do well and the thing about what you have to uh, learn in bass fishing 
is the skill levels of anglers are so high now that um, it, everybody's going to figure it out. I mean, you, if you get into an area that's really, really good and it's got a lot of potential and a lot of people are, are in that same water and fishing that water, your odds of doing well go way down. Unless you're fishing an area that has like a lot of submerged or emergent vegetation. Vegetation, particularly thick vegetation and vast areas of it can offset fishing pressure because there's simply so many fish that are grouped into an area. But when you have a lake like Lake Louisville or any of these lakes that are primarily wood and rock, it, that's not the case. You don't have these big groups of fish using uh, certain areas. So um, that's one of the things you just sort of have to learn. It's a real abstract deal. Um, you gotta be able to break down, you know, like I said, subtleties within areas and just pay attention, you know, pay attention to the flow that's going on in a lake. And that's one of the things I really like to do in practice and that I'm doing here at Lake Louisville. I'm just, I'm, I'm sort of stepping back and taking a second and sort of watching where everybody's coming in and out of. And I'm, I'm sort of trying to gravitate away from those areas because I've spent a little bit of time in those areas trying some off the wall stuff, still not getting bit. Um, and then when I get into these areas that are basically void of fishing pressure, um, I'm not getting as many bites but at least I'm getting bit and I'd rather have um, I'd rather be fishing for fewer fish in an area that's not getting a lot of fishing pressure than you know competing for more fish in an area that's really getting a lot of fishing pressure on a lake like uh, Lake Louisville here that um, has a lot of dead water and that's another thing that you have to to realize in lakes some lakes simply have more dead water than others. For example, Table Rock Lake, you know, back my home lake, you can literally put your trolling motor down on that lake and troll every inch of shoreline on that bank and you'll have a chance of catching a bass. There's not much dead water on that lake. A lake like Lake Louisville, you got a tremendous amount of dead water. You got a lot of stuff that's just flat, sandy, gravel, just no cover for the bass. A lot of white bass are using it. There's a lot of dead water on this lake and there's a lot of dead water uh, on a lot of lakes in the country. And when you get a lake that you have a lot of dead water in it, these lakes that have heavy fishing pressure, man-made impoundments, usually the ones that are pretty old, you have really got to be keyed in on the fishing pressure and, and try to adapt to that. But anyway, uh, just a few points I want to leave you with. Um, like I said, biggest advice I can give you on heavily fished areas, stay out of those areas that are getting a lot of boat traffic coming in because if you see a boat coming in on a point and you say, say if you're in one area and you, and you're in an area for like an hour and there's a real obvious point, secondary point, main lake point, and you see two or three boats pulling in and out of it in an hour, you can pretty much guarantee there's dozens and dozens of bow, fish hitting that point during the day. You need to get out of there and find something else. Look for some, but something a little bit more in obvious, a little bit more subtle, pay attention to where everybody's fishing. And that's just another uh, way that you can increase your odds on these heavily fished lakes. So I'm going to get back out to you. Still, still got a lot of practicing to do here. Got to, got to find some fish. This place is a grind over here. Um, there is some good fish in this lake, but man, there, it's just, they're few and far between. So, uh, Anyway, we'll check in later and I'll keep you updated as the week goes on. See y'all.